Welcome to Tokyo folks, this is the Leica Q, or well, this is actually the P variant, but the Leica Q is arguably the top full frame fixed lens compact camera on the market, and that's despite it having been out for four years now. Top line things about it, it's great balance of speed, ergonomics, and image quality. It's a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, a 28 millimeter f1.7 lens, and it's widely regarded as a benchmark. It's got a 3.7 megapixel viewfinder, which was light years ahead of its time. And today, Leica have announced this. This is the Q2. Now, you might feel like you're seeing double. You see, see what I've done there? It's a little, it's a little thing, little joke there. It's actually outwardly looks very similar, but there are some significant upgrades on this. In this video, I'm gonna take you to Hong Kong, New York, and Tokyo, and we're gonna test these out and see how does the Q2 compare to the Q1. Okay, folks, so as I said, I'm filming this in three different countries. I'm always on the road. A little compact camera like this is designed for that kind of work, so this is a great opportunity to test it out. If you wanna see where else I'm headed in the world, jump on over to macgranger.com forward slash workshops. You can sign up to my mailing list there and it lists out everything. So I'm starting my Japan tour tonight. Next one is Laos, then I am off to Mongolia, Bhutan, Iceland, and Southern Africa. I would love to see you. I'll also be in London in some places just for some weekend workshops as well. So, outwardly, not too different on these cameras, but there are some significant specs upgrades between them. Let me run through the differences. So, first of all, this has now gone from 24 megapixel to a newly designed 47.3 megapixel full frame sensor. That's almost double the resolution and they're claiming 13 stops of dynamic range. It's also added 4K video and Bluetooth low energy. It's got optional image stabilization now just for when you dip below 1 60th of a second. The EVF is the same resolution, but it's been upgraded to an even brighter OLED display unit, which from my testing is even sharper and easier to see when you're in perfect focus. And why am I in the rain? Because the Q2 has added IP52 rated splash and dust resistance. A lot of users are gonna be happy about this, being able to take it into inclement weather and not worry about how the camera is going to perform is a big deal. Now that's the top line differences. There's some important things in there, some kind of cool things there. And of course, given that four years have passed, potentially the sensor tech has developed so far that even though they've doubled the res, things like our ISO performance may still hold up. I am going to test that out. But my concerns when I heard that were, okay, so double the resolution 4K video. Is it now gonna get slower? Is it going to overheat? Adding in the seals, is it going to overheat or is it going to get fatter? So you can rejoice that outwardly the bodies are identical pretty much. The button layout has changed, but the size hasn't. The new lens is about a millimeter or two fatter, but the front filter thread is the same. But the width of the different dials on the lens have improved in terms of their ergonomics. But for those of you who aren't familiar with the Q1, I should run through what they have in common so you have a full list of the specs. Otherwise, you can check the links in the description below for all of this information and more, and all of the best pricing. Okay, so they're both using the exact same 28 millimeter f1.7 lens. Leica is claiming the same autofocus and processing speed thanks to the new Maestro processor that keeps up with the resolution jump. They're both 10 frames a second mechanical, 20 frames per second electronic, again, despite the resolution jump. And they say there's no overheating. The battery has been upgraded to the same battery that SL uses to retain the same battery life. And overall, they're claiming the same speed. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it really does perform. On paper, that's all fine and good. Let's take it out in the field and see how it actually performs in the hand. First thing when I got this camera in, I had Joe in for the day. So we just spent some time shooting with this and some other cameras that I had in at the time to get familiar with it, to be confident with the controls, the button layout, all of that kind of thing. Because I hadn't myself shot with the Q or any of those variants in the past. So we did some little fashion shots. We went to the dog park. Here's some of the resulting images, just light processing on all the images I'm showing you here, nothing over the top. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> on that note, time to move on. So next up, I was in Hong Kong, so I caught the minibus out to Sai Kung, famous area for their seafood sellers that sell it straight from the boat on the harbour. They're filleting, gutting it, and then serving it up to the customers right there and then. So a great place to test out the queue. And given that it was so quiet, both the original queue and the queue too, I was shooting right over people's shoulders and they really couldn't even notice that I was doing it. And great amount of detail on that 47 megapixel sense. You can see we can go right in close and see so much. Okay, folks, I've just stepped in for some lunch. Apologies for the noise. Something to address, the full frame fixed lens market is just a premium point in the market. There isn't a budget option. Whether you're looking at the Sony Cybershot RX1 R2, which is $3,300, the Leica Q Original, which is now around $4,000, this guy, I don't know the exact price, but check the links below, or the Zeiss, upcoming Zeiss ZX1, which no one knows the price of yet, all of them are premium prices now is this at a four thousand plus price point completely unreasonable or actually a bargain it's going to depend on your perspective for a lot of people it's going to be out of their means but if you look at say a leica m mount 28 mil lens the f2 is 4400 dollars alone just for the lens. And if you're looking at the F1.4 M lens, it's $7,000. So suddenly this whole camera for that price maybe is actually a bargain in the world of Leica anyway. Okay, next up, let's take a look at high ISO. I got this scene at a hotel I'm staying at in Japan and shot it at a series of ISOs. So we're gonna start out here on the Q1. That's the wide shot. I'm gonna jump in on the 100% crop in 4K. This is ISO 1600 on the Q1. That's 3200, 6400, 12,500, 25,000, and then maxing out there at 50,000. And you can see, you know, at the lower numbers, it's doing quite well. As we're getting higher, it's falling apart. Now let's take a look at the Q2. Remember, this is a double resolution sensor, but it is also a four years newer sensor. And jumping in at the 100%, there's 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,500, 25,000, and 50,000. I think it's fair to say at the higher ISOs, it's looks more detailed but the prominence of the noise pattern is greater but there's two ways to look at high iso should you be looking at it at 100 percent or at a similar crop so let's look again here at 1600 this is the crop on the q1 and then here is the same crop on the q2 and at a higher res because it's coming off a double res sensor the Q2 is actually looking a lot better. So it really depends. If you're looking to crop in on the Q2, the result may not be as good. If you're looking to print from each of the cameras at the same size, the Q2 is going to look significantly better. Also, whilst I was in Hong Kong, I made a stop at one of my favorite suburbs to the seafood stores. No, not to eat seafood, but because most of the stores keep a cat. They believe having the cat scares away any rodents and the cats have been trained not to eat the seafood. Hey, kitty. So all of this is just filmed with the GoPro, curious little one. I actually went to four or five different shots, but I'll concentrate in on this little guy because he was really active and curious and I was able to get a range of different shots here using the new Q2. It was the only camera I took along with me that day. So I played with it, posed it, interacted with it, tried to get it to reach out to the camera and catch it in different poses. If you ever tried shooting cats, you'll know they're not always this docile. But here's some of the shots that I captured. I really like some of these. There's a huge amount of detail if you go in from the sensor. That lens is absolutely up to the task on the 47 megapixel sensor. It's just yielding a crazy amount of detail. Our stop in Hong Kong is at a traditional snake soup store. Now, whatever you think about eating snake soup, it's a dying tradition that's been around for hundreds of years. This is the Sifu Master. 
He is willing to pose for photos, but he doesn't screw around. He grabs a snake, poses with it, stands for 10 seconds, and then puts it away again. So you need to be ready, you need to get the shot. He can't control where it's flicking around. Here's the shot I got. I was pretty happy with the composition and that we're able to get the snake nice and perfectly in focus. I thanked him, he put it away, and then I just tried to get some shots through the tiny little bars, blurring them out of the snake. And as you can see, again, huge and beautiful amount of detail coming up there. Given it's been four years and very little has changed in terms of how the cameras look and their size, it might seem silly to talk about ergonomics. But I've not heard a single Q user complain about the ergonomics. It's almost always universal praise. So the fact that's not changed much is a good thing. There are a couple of things that in my opinion significantly improve it though. The button layout is now somewhere right between a Leica M and a CL. The number of buttons on the back has been streamlined, the single and continuous has been taken out of the on-off switch as well as taking away the video record button that's now done through the shutter release. We've now got the button built into the dial and the spacing on the dials on the lens have changed. So the macro was always a little bit hard to grab, now it's that little bit thicker. Likewise, the aperture ring is now thicker and the indentation feel has itself changed. The autofocus override and manual focus adjustment is pretty much unchanged. The only other thing to note, this small button for the digital frame selector, the original Q gave you 35 and 50 mil frames. The higher res has let them now extend that to give you a 75 mil option as well. Okay, so I've had a couple of weeks with this camera now and I've really enjoyed using it, but it is difficult to review this kind of a camera because it's really quite niche. Leica in general, I think when you're doing reviews, there's three different kind of potential audiences. There's people who get Leica and have the budget and they just buy it and use it and love their photography and they're not in the comments section getting into arguments. Then there's the people who get it, who appreciate it, who like it, but it's just not in their realm due to the cost. And then there's people who, whether they can afford it or not, just don't get it. So I'm not here to convince you of anything, but in terms of a review, comparing the original Q to the Q2, I think it's a really worthy upgrade. Unlike camera companies like my beloved Nikon or Sony or Canon who pump out updates like every year or 18 months, this has been a four year turnaround. So the fact that it's added in a brand new high res sensor, retain the speed, doesn't overheat, retains the you know great ISO performance, is giving incredible image performance, that's kind of enough. And the fact that it's now, comf I can confidently be out in the rain with it is a really big thing as well. And one thing I think for people who are looking at this for travel or street that you're gonna really appreciate is there's essentially no shutter lag. The, the way that I was able to get those shots of those cats was getting the focus point in the right place, framing the shot, and as it was moving around, being able to know as I hit the shutter, it would grab focus and take the, the shot quick enough that they weren't moving out of focus, that's a really big thing. And it's something that not a lot of mirrorless cameras have. The highest, uh, high, the highest DSLRs do tend to have that performance, but in my experience, only the very top mirrorless cameras come close to that kind of instantaneous focus and capture that I was able to get with this one. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of the images I've captured with this one as well. I'll see you soon.